Okay, uh, welcome to the Poor Man's Computer Repair Show Part 2. I'm your host, Stats Jenkins. Um, what you see before you is the new motherboard. Um, thanks to Nero not working right um, and uh, messing up what, what the, the, the 24 minutes that recorded before all this, uh, what we have done is this is the new motherboard. And what it is, it is here a MSI A55M E35, which I bought from uh, Tiger Direct. Not online, I actually went into the store and bought it for, uh, actually, it had this on sale for about 60 bucks. Okay, now, uh, what, this per what this has in it is a uh, it, ha it has three display outputs. It has your standard uh, serial port for your monitor. It has the high tech. Uh, uh, what is that? Um, it, ha it has the high tech port, and it also has an HDMI port. It also has four. Actually, why don't just simply just do this? Okay. Now, as you can see, there is your standard port. The the more high tech and you have your HDMI port you have four actually two four six you have six actually USB ports uh, which is one of the reasons why I got this since uh, most of our devices are USB are USB you know printer scanner uh, camera or cameras iPods and stuff like that Here's your sound card. Okay. Now, what you also see here is let me turn it around this way. Okay. Now, once again, just 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 like in the in, if you watched the previous episode, here is the new he this is the new fan that plugs in right here. And the the heat sink is still on top and underneath the processor so and what I'm going to do is I'm going to backtrack to show you exactly what needed to be done in order to get to this point okay now also here here is the RAM chip okay and if you watched the previous episode you saw how we took the RAM chip out okay and the new RAM chip is Eight gigabytes. Okay, this is the DDR3, and it operates at uh, it's PC3 and at 128. Now I was hoping to get a, uh, I was hoping to get more, but budget constraints forced kind of kind of forced the issue. I, I could have gotten two four. I could have gotten two four gigabytes, and here's the deal. Sometimes, yeah, you may come out a little cheaper. And by the way, I got this. I got the RAM chip from Newegg because I had shopped at um, Tiger Direct Online and Micro Center, and the prices that they wanted for theirs, uh, for, for 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 their RAM chips was a uh, uh, way out of my. For me, they were a bit pricey. I mean, uh, yes, uh, yes. I I, I want uh, quality, but also at the same time, I want I want more bang for my buck. And this RAM chip cost me about eighty dollars. But what happens is, with this new RAM chip, it comes out with the uh, side process, the, the the those the extra side process to where I can actually set aside more memory for graphics and so on and so forth so that's another reason why I got it also uh, I since it's just specifically designed for a AMD board that that's the other thing <clears throat> so and here and so I'm going to show you the box for the processor now uh, this the processor I got at the same time with the motherboard at Tiger Direct. This cost me about seventy-five bucks, seventy-five dollars. As you can see, it is a Athlon, and it and it's this multi-core, and it's actually and for this, it's actually a quad-core. And I don't know if you can see that. 
uh, from here it sees it says time for 750k processor um, the base gigahertz which is um, to go to back the backtrack the more gigahertz the faster it, the faster it, it can process uh, the base is at 3.4 uh, the max it can do if you overclock it or if you push everything to its max is four. And here, here's the other thing that is very important. Let me slide out. This processor is Socket FM2. Now here's the important thing about when you are looking to get a processor slash motherboard. Now nowadays the the stores actually bundle the packages so that way you so 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 that way the processor matches the motherboard however if you're stubborn like I am and you don't like the I'm not that stubborn thank you my wife and my wife over here nodding in agreement and and laughing at me I'm not that stubborn but 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 if you're stubborn and, and and you know what you're doing now my daughter's still facing me anyway uh, now makes the, the, the one thing you got to be wary of is this if you're buying separate make certain that the processor matches the motherboard this motherboard is designed as you can see here bring it down for the AMD FM2 processors, so so it's not necessarily if, if you're doing this for the first time, it's not where one size fits all. Each processor and each motherboard fits a certain category or type, and if you mix it, so 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 if you're going to mix and match, make certain that you have the right motherboard for the processor that you actually want and for me what what I did was, was kind of go catch as catch can because one I had wanted to get a processor that was powerful enough to run the programs and do the things that we wanted to do the other thing is that what kind of made my uh, search a little little bit more tedious is the fact that I wanted more PCI slots be since uh, we have multiple devices that use USB ports. And the reason why I chose the these this MSI is because of what the what really sold me is the fact of the six multi ports. So now, what we have here is now the motherboard ready to go into the case. Okay, as you can see here, the fan, the CPU fan goes right here. And the other thing is this. Where is it? What do I do with those instructions? Ah. As always, this motherboard comes with instructions. You, uh, unlike other unboxings, when people just simply just toss the instructions, you can't do that with this. Because unless you have this, you don't fit. You can't figure out where everything goes. So you definitely just simply just say, "Oh, screw it, toss." No. Okay. So from here, what I want to do now, and another reason why I put have I decided to put the RAM chip and the processor in on, a, on right now. Well, one simply because one, I have a lot more room, as you can see. To, to maneuver, I can turn, I, I easily turn everything around without having to worry about lifting a big fat heavy case. And and two, it, it since it's, it's more on an even flat surface, it, you know, I won't have to worry about putting under undue pressure. Also, had I decided to put it into the case, I would have to put it on the mounting screws. Well, from here, if I press down, I'm not pressing down and, and possibly warping or cracking the board. So, so this way is is a, a if you don't work hard, work smart. So this was the smarter way of putting it of of 
getting everything ready. And so now we are ready to put this into our case. So I'm gonna just set this off to the side and bring back our case. So now, here's our case again. And if you watched the previous episode, we we got every we now we have everything cleaned out and everything. Still looks a kind of a little run down, but you know that hardly there is no dust, um, a, a, any residue or whatever. I've, I've I uh, got out. So now, and the other thing that I did prior to this is I also before putting the processor in and everything I try just kind of pre-check to see whether where to see whether or not these mounting holes or these mounting pegs would match up with the motherboard and kind of find out that this one little peg here zoom in there we go that this one little peg here was was did not line up it was right here, so I uh, took a uh, actually used a socket wrench to loosen it up and put it in. So now I'm gonna zoom back out, and so now one of the first things we're gonna do is here. Here is the back of the the, the back template for the motherboard. So now. We have the dubious honor of putting this into the side here. And hopefully this go around and it'll, it'll just pop right in. There we go. Now, done. Next, we're what we're going to do is put the motherboard in, turn you around, and that, and make certain that back matches back. And I put the stupid thing in backwards. There we go. Get your scuffer in there. There. That's better. much better okay so now we got that in uh, next we're gonna put the screws in See, there's six screws. Okay. 
I'm gonna see you. Dang it. Another reason why you don't do this while it is plugged in. Now where did that screw go? Oh, there you are. Okay, and that's pretty snug. There, there, there's a six screw that goes right there, but I'm not going to worry about it because right now, these five have got it pretty much to where this sucker ain't going anywhere. And as you can see, you see how well the, the template fits in. Everything is right there where it's supposed to be. Nice and neat. Okay, so what's next? The next step actually is to get the let's zoom in here is to get the power come on now Yeah, this is well this is for a speaker but now more importantly come out and bless you is to connect the power from the, the, the on on off on your on off and reset switch from your motherboard to the computer. And this is where this comes in. Uh huh. So now, real quick. Oh. Go through here. English back panel. Internal connectors, page 19. the CPU fan connectors okay actually it's actually on page 22 okay so from here what needs to happen is this I need to find JPF 1 and match up the jumpers to the actual board okay so JPF actually JPF JPF Okay, JPF1 is right there. Get it to the right spot here. JPF is right here. Okay, so now what I gotta do is match up 
the right move. The right plug to the to its corresponding port. And they are labeled. You have power switch, power LED, reset switch, and HDD. Now the caveat to this is you gotta match up the positive which is the which has a little triangle or or square to the right thing. So from here, go to page twenty-two. The power switch, which is this LED, this doohickey right here, is this this power switch? I know you can't. I know you probably can't see. I gotta move it up a little. Okay. This one is the power switch, which is pins eight through ten. And according to the so the power switch actually goes. Here. Make sure that is JPF1. Yep. So the power switch goes right here. There. Next, the power LED goes to the next, goes right next to it. Okay, because if you sit back and look, okay, you look at it from this direction, oh, there we go, now you see exactly where everything's supposed to be. Okay, cause I, and, and I'm looking at the diagram as, from the direction that where I'm looking at. Okay, so now. Power LED. Should go thusly. This got to be a certain flavor. Okay, now what's next? We we got through putting the power switch into the motherboard, which is here. Uh, the LED indicator, which goes into the front, right here. So what's next is going according to page 22. Okay, and I'm hopefully you can see that from here. The next step is the reset switch and the hard drive LED. Now once again, you got to match there. There's a positive, as you can see. If you can get a little closer to that, I know it looks kind of blurry. It looks a little brief and white. Time for some glasses. But there's a there's a plus and a minus. So I want to try to match the plus to plus and minus to minus. So that way, it'll work right. Okay. So here we go. And right here we have re. It says reset switch. So from here. I'm assuming the lighter color is the positive, so it should go right here. Don't give me any grief. Shump. And for the hard drive. There. Make sure they're all in. Now, okay, so that takes care of your power, your power switch, the the little the, the little LED that shows that shows you that the power is actually on, and same thing for your reset switch and your hard to show you that your hard drive is actually working. So what are we, so from here? What are we going to do next? Uh, from here, I want to connect the 
USB, the front USB ports into the motherboard. So that should still be somewhere here on page. Let's see here. Ah, here we go. Page 23. So now we want the USB 2.0 expansion connectors. And that is JUSB 1, which is JUSB 1, which is right here. And so, actually, you know what? What we should do is do the speaker for the uh, motherboard, too. Let's get that out of the way first. Uh, let me see. Front panel, audio connector, JOD 1. Where's J odd one? Ah, right there. That looks like yeah, which is right here. So here is the speaker. Alright, you do hickey. And it should go right. Oh, don't give me no grief. There. You're probably right here. If I'm not mistaken. That's according to the... Yeah, those 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 first those first sprockets you pre, you could pretty much ignore. It's the from the second on back that pretty much defines where you want to. So this so that's all good. Now we can look at the USB expansion, which is still on, which is also also on page twenty three. Okay, so from here, so from here it looks like from this way, USB port one and USB port two goes right there. So here we go, JUSB odd one and two. And there's the ground, so let me make sure we put the ground in the right spot here. Because otherwise it'll go plowy. Ground is actually the huh, it's actually the first plug. Because the first pin according to this, you really don't is not is pretty much not used. So the ground, which is here, actually goes right here. And remember what I stated. You always grab, you use the base, not the wire. Oh. Yeah. Now stay there, you bastard. wondering and it actually gives you it actually gives you two it actually gives you two extra ports for the you for the USB 2.0 so 
quick. Dang it. So we're gonna repeat the process here for the other for the other port. Uh-huh. Okay, there we go. Starting to look like a little something now, don't it? All right, now from here, the really fun part. Let me move you over. Okay. Now from here, I could connect these, but right now, uh, I'll hold off and wait. Um, you know, right right now, I just want, want, want to get the, get the core components in before we start getting fancy smashy. Okay. So from here, what's next? Actually, can't power this thing up without any power. So, here we go. Now we get to now we get to really have the real fun with the octopus. That's what I like to call it. All right, now. Try to get everything, try to make everything look nice and neat. Of course, in the computer, I, nice and neat in the computer, uh, that's, I think sometimes that's an oxymoron. So now, we're getting ready to connect the power. Here is your power core for your computer. Without this, you ain't got uh, 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 all, all you got is a big pile of whatever. Big power silicon, plastic, and, and, and flammable substances. So now we're getting ready to put the plug the power in. Now remember, if you watch if you watch the first one, I already explained that this is like uh, 22, 22 pins. So now, and it's, here, here's the little clip. So now we're getting ready to plug the main power into the from 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 the cord into the motherboard. Hmm. Now this is interesting. Now this one actually has the other uh, four. So now from here, hmm. Which do I do? Do I actually do I actually form bow trying to put it all in, or do I actually go for the other? Or do I actually? Well, actually, seeing how this really ain't going to reach without. Man, it's in there. Now, are you going to reach? Not without. And no. So, I will form Voltron here. There we go. <laughs> okay, so now we so so now it's actually twenty four. Move you. Ooh, this is what I hate about cords. It gets set in a certain certain way, and they think they can stay that way. Okay. So now, okay. So now we got him. Got it all in there. And if worse come to worse, we can undo what we did. But I think, for the most part, this is the right step. All right, now, because here is the other port for that four here. And the only reason why I didn't use it that way, simply because with this as the way it is, I don't want to risk having to, I could snip this, 
and and gain some extra room if worse come to worse that's what i will do but right now uh keep it simple stupid or in some cases keep it simple dumbass so so right now i'm gonna try to keep it simple all right so now we got that we got the power what's next hard drives and this is where it's gonna get interesting so give me one second here <clears throat> Okay, this is where it's going to get very interesting. Scoot that over a little bit. And make sure that it's in. And in and down. Okay. Let me see if we can zoom in here. There we go. Okay, as you can see. As you can see, with this new motherboard, all the connections are SATA, which is no big deal at first, because I do have a, a 250 gigabyte hard drive here that was from the old system. Okay, and as you can see in the back here, uh, there's your SATA. This is the data cable and the power. So, uh, actually, this is the power and that's the data. So, it's all good. And actually, I sure need to try to make sure that it is set for. Well, usually with the course, it's usually set for master or slave. So, from here, it's all good for this. Now. get it out here get this out here Moment. yes I did this previously so sue me here is a terabyte hard drive that we've been probably wanting for God knows how long I uh, actually found this on sale at Tiger Direct for $60 you know uh, once again I'm not the kind of person who just simply goes soon as soon as somebody goes out yeah, so as soon as I go out and so as soon as they come out with something new go eh, I gotta have it. No, I sit back and wait because the stuff that, that you really want actually comes down in price So uh, for us in our data storage what we what we really need is practically 10 terabytes So that way we have something for the future. However, they haven't come out with that yet so and uh, so right now um, for right now with all the stuff that we have a terabyte eh, It will work you know, it could if it, you know one one once the two or three come down in price, um, or either internal or external, we'll snag it. But for right now, this will work. And as you can see, it has the same, the same <laughs> back. Okay, this is going to be where our data is stored. The, for, for the terabyte and it's a Seagate um, I, uh, am I partial to certain brands? Yes because uh, I've, I've had um, experiences with certain other brands Western Digital to where um, I've always had issues uh, since uh, you know bought, bought a Western Digital thinking it was going to last me uh, I bought a 250 gigabyte Western Digital thought it was going to last me a moment I can't do squat with it, and I wasted a good sixty dollars. And, and and if your time is, if your time or your money is precious to you, in these days and times, you can't simply you. I mean, for for I, I'm the kind of person I don't like. I don't like wasting a penny. So, okay. Now, this is where it's going to get very interesting. Remember, in the previous episode, we were talking about. I was talking about recycling our old 
our, the, our old hardware. Okay, well, here we have our old 80 gigabyte hard drive that still has the old system on here. Um, after the a, a, after the motherboard crash, and this is the part that that hurts me. After the motherboard crash, I had to reset this and reinstall Windows, losing a whole lot of data. Fortunately, and in doing so, that was it was a hard a hard format, which means the whole entire disk got erased. The good thing about it is the majority of the information was already saved on an external hard drive. So therefore, all the, the only sad part about it, some of the newer stuff that was on there is gone. Oh well. And that led us to having with with the mother with this previous motherboard having to doubt uh, the stability of the system. That's why I had the other that other smaller hard drive tested to make sure that it would work. That the, the 250 set of the 250 gigabyte set of hard drive is where the programs and Windows is actually going to be stored on. Now, here's the funny part. Here's the old motherboard. As you can see, the for the this one was uh, it was at the cusp where USB was and SATA was actually coming in. So you have the two ports here, two ports here for SATA drives. But it still had it was still primarily for IDE. So blue was your master, white was your slave, and this would be for your uh, floppy disk. If you still use the three by three by fives, which we still do, and I'm going, and I'm tempted to still try to rest. Um, actually, now that we have the terabyte, I'm actually tempted to lift all the data from from those onto the uh, onto that terabyte just so, just for redundancy 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 uh, uh, you know after class I, I, I have this phobia of losing data so if, if I could I would if, if, I, if they had a terabyte solid state hard drive I pay for the money okay so from here as you can see it's um, all IDE so now what problem does that present? Hmm. Okay. As you can see, this is an OIDE. It could easily fit into the new hard drive. I mean, it, it, into the old motherboard, right? Well, let's look. Here. Zoom in. Two of these things don't look like the others. Now, does it? So, how do we get around that? And actually, moreover, where are you guys? There you go. <clears throat> moreover, here are our dual burners, DVD burners, from the old from the old system. Hmm. Once again, IDE. SATA. So how do we get around that? More on that later. Let's first hook up the new let's hook up the new SATA hard drives. Let's see, where are you? Now, with this new motherboard also came, let can zoom out here now. Came out with uh two SATA drive. Uh two data cables. Now, here's a here poses another interesting problem. Okay, this is for one of the hard drives. This is the this port here is for the data. This is for the power to power the hard drive. Hmm. Don't look the same, does it? Okay. Houston, we have a small problem. How do we get around that? Show you. Where did you go? Thank you. 
right here. Where did it go? There is an adapter that you can use to convert power sources. And where did that power source go? Actually, where did that adapter go? Okay, so how, so once again, so how do you get around that problem? With a little, with a adapter here that could actually converts this into a SATA, SATA power cable. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose. One that would be the closest to the oh actually we do have an extra okay so we actually do have one more uh, extra power power jumper leave you off to the side so what I want to do is try to choose one to where it would actually work out closer to the so I, I think I'm gonna choose this one right here okay so we're gonna take this in make sure you fit shut up now we're all set now we have two USB power outlets so now what we're getting ready to do which one are you okay so we're getting ready to take the 250 gigabyte and go ahead and get it set into his new home and what do I need I need those three to go ah here we go and so now, now actually what I should have done was wire, take these cords here and, and snake them underneath. But, oh, you know what? As many times I keep tearing into something, this, this is fine because I'm not going to use a whole, I'm not going to be going through a whole, whole heck of a lot to to uh, get this up and running. So we slide you on in here thusly. Yeah. If I can do a little better. Are you? Uh, that's about right. Okay, so from here, we're good. Okay, so now we get ready to Now they use three. Now you're supposed to use three, three screws. I'm only just going to use one to keep it 
There, I should keep it from. Yeah, that's that's that, that's not going anywhere. And so, do the terabyte. Where did you go? So now we do the terabyte, same way. Make sure that the we want to make sure that the ports are pointing out to. So we go in here like this. Actually, there's two on the other side. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Okay, that's not going anywhere. Okay, that takes care of the state of drive number two. And lastly, but certainly not the least, get ready for our old 80 gigabyte hard drive. Now this is, remember, we still got the, the IDE and that's SATA. So I'll show you a little, and so we're getting close to show you how, how, to, how to get around all this. Now, I am not going to screw this one in uh, just for the sole fact of knowing that this is just an experiment. Hopefully, it'll work to where I can actually use this. If not, I don't want to have it in there. So, now, what we're going to do next is here are the data cables for the SATA. Okay, so so what we're going to do now is plug in here and since this is number one uh, where are you? There you go. We're going to put it in SATA 1. There we go. SATA 2.
and theta 2 goes right here. Okay, next what we're going to do is go ahead and attach from our power Okay, now, okay, so now we got that plugged in. Now, the interesting part is what to do about that connection. Obviously, the power end isn't much of a problem. Okay, we can easily plug in the power. The real challenge now is to deal with the IDE connector connection into the SATA. So how do we get around that? I'm about to show you. Here is a IDE to SATA connector. Okay. So now, hmm. And I just realized a small little problem here. I need I need it should have more than one adapter, power adapter here. So it looks like it still needs to use that. Okay, so this adapter here would connect from, this actually plugs into the back of your IDE connector and from here it powers from here. So here's what we're going to do. And actually what I'm going to do is do this first. There. And actually,
cables. No. And we have run into our first problem. And here's the issue. This particular port with the cables that I have got will not work. They have plug-ins fine into from the SATA end from, from the motherboard end, but from this little device to is not going to work. Even with some of the older ones that I have from the previous system. So, from here we've run into our first glitch. So from here we've run into our first real, at, 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 the, at the carefully trying to map all this out, this is our first real glitch that we've run into. So from here I've got to stop and retrack and backtrack here for a second to figure out what what with the proper cable to connect from this port to fit into the SATA obviously and I had, I had I had previously anticipated this problem and thought that I had the right cable apparently I don't so tune in next time to figure out there's a way to where to where we can sit back and figure out what 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 to do next um, so this concludes this episode of the Poor Man's Computer Repair Service. I'm your host, Dash Jenkins. And oh, by the way, uh, if you like what you're seeing, don't forget to subscribe and like. And uh, and as always, uh, check check what else is on the KMC channel to see whether or not this figure out to see whether or not there's something else you may like. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and do this. and attach it in Okay, it won't work for the hard drive. Maybe it will work for the
Okay, so we're running into a major problem here. These adapters are not working with Okay, well we've run to our first really major glitch here. These adapters are not suited all because of this all because of this power for the hard drive or any other adapter to actually fit. If it weren't here it'd be a different story. So how do we get around that? Actually, I figured it out. Can use the cables here. So now, There we go. Let's see what you see what I've done. Cable here. Cable to device. Okay. So now we're cooking with some petrol here. Now I can slide this in. Just takes a moment to, all you gotta do is don't, remain calm. Sit back and think things through. Okay. <laughs> And now, Okay, so we're all good. Hey, nail it. You dirty. Get back. Get your butt back in there. Okay, you just don't want to work. You just want to be effing stubborn. Fine, now be that way. Okay, so the connecting from from the device to the from the data cable for from the adapter to to our to our IDE device is no problem because I have plenty of cables. The problem still remains here is this. The USB data cable going into the SATA drive. I do not have the right kind of cable to make this happen. So still we've overcome one problem. I've overcome one problem but I still have another that I have to deal with. So So from here, uh, so from here, I still got a little backtracking to do, and to figure out which cable will work best. Also, I'm still, I'm also concerned that it, that this power cable here, 
Uh, so from here, I'm also looking at that as a other another potential problem because I still had because because now all of a sudden I'm running out of ports here because I still have a burner, two burners to deal with. Uh, and oh, by the way, the one the one thing I, I'm not overly worried about is this: uh, these devices that actually come with, and I'll show you. There it is. This this uh, um, IDE to SATA adapter actually comes with its own uh, with, with, with with an adaption to where you can convert this into this and still power the unit. So from here, I guess I'm still all good. Because from here I still have one. Oh, thank you, love. My wife just gave me an extra drink. And no, and no, I don't do this drunk all the time. So, so if anybody says I don't know what the hell I'm doing, I can just, I can still do this drunk or sober. Thank you. <clears throat> so from here I still have one here, and I still have one here. And one here and one here. So for my burners, I'm not overly worried. It's the it's the data part now that is the issue. So uh, tune in next time, because because from here I'm gonna get on this ASAP because I want this fucker up and up and running. I was kind of hoping to get it up and running right now. And technically speaking, if uh well actually I really can't because unfortunately here's the issue. In order for the hard drive to put uh, to, to install Windows and everything else, now for now basically for the to fire up the motherboard, I really don't need a hard drive to do so. But in order to in order to install Windows 7, I need a hard drive. I, I need I, I, I need a I need a burn, I need a, a DVD uh, drive to be up and running. And so, yeah, it, well, on the one hand, well, some people say, well, why don't you go get a, a, a brand new DVD burner? I'm not trying to spend another 60 damn dollars. Okay? I am not. And, 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 and more importantly, the, the main part is, is to recycle the old hardware. So already I've done part of that you, with, with the cable. I can still do that with the, with, with, with the data cable from... And the adapter. So I simply so instead of spending sixty dollars or fifty dollars on a on, or some people say thirty, I could probably spend five or six bucks. You do the math. So tune in next time to the Poor Man's Computer Repair Service where we resolve this little dilemma. If you like what you see, once again, don't 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 forget to like and, and subscribe. Uh, and once again, uh, for, and furthermore, check into our, uh, uh, what, and, and check into what we're doing on, on the KMC channel. If there's some, anything else that we that, that that we have that may catch your interest, uh, like and subscribe to that too. Also follow. Uh, also, you can follow follow what's going on on Facebook. If you have any questions, uh, you can comment. You or you you can put into the comments below, and I will. Um, be more than happy to respond to you. You know, um, if you if but if you're gonna sit up here and act ignorant, I am not going to respond. I, uh, uh, despite what some people may think, I am a professional. And if 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 you're gonna sit up here and be on a rant fest, or 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 or, or you get your jollies off, or you get your popularity on rag on ragging, I'm not gonna fall for that. Uh, I, I'm simply gonna just simply just sit back. And see what you're doing, and I'm not going to respond. So, uh, so from here, I'll uh, so from here, tune in next week, and I'll show you what, how. Hopefully, next week, uh, depending on how on how quick I, I can get, how, how quick I can get the part in to resolve this, and we'll and we'll pick it up from where we step off. Tune in next time.